Hi, I'm Andrew Baxter and welcome to another Spotlight Scotland. You join me today in my home village of Kinloch Leeward, a village of around about 800 people set at the head of beautiful Loch Leeward, surrounded by mountains just seven miles from the world famous Glencoe uh, up on the west coast of the Highlands. And if you were to come here during the summer months and walk along this track that we are heading down towards the village uh, today, you'll see uh, many people steaming past in their walking boots and with their rucksacks on. And they are heading towards the village for their last stop before arriving in Fort William uh, tomorrow. Uh, they are on the West Highland Way, Scotland's very first national trail established in the 1980s. It stretches from the outskirts of Glasgow all the way up Loch Lomond, across Rannick Moor, round the edge of Glencoe, through Kinloch Leven, and eventually to Fort William, their destination for those walkers. So I can guarantee uh, that you'll see many of those people heading down this track with blisters, hopping away with sore knees, rubbing uh, their aching ankles after four or five days walking through uh, the rugged but splendid, splendid uh, Scottish countryside. Now, if they had walked this way all in the late 1800s, they wouldn't have seen very much at all. There were a couple of shooting lodges built by Victorian industrial entrepreneurs and a couple of farmhouses and not a lot else. But that all changed in 1905 when 3,000 navvies, mainly economic migrants from Ireland, but also from the central part of Scotland, places like Glasgow, headed here looking for work as a aluminium smelter was under construction along with an enormous dam that feeds water along these pipes that we're walking alongside uh, now and uh, that aluminium smelter struck the first uh, ingot of aluminium on Christmas Day 1907. Now unfortunately it's no longer here, it closed in 2000 and was demolished shortly thereafter. There's remnants of that industrial past still here. Uh, the carbon bunker where they stored carbon for the smelting process is a, a world-renowned climbing center. And another part of the old building is a brewery and the lab where they tested the metal. Uh, the quality of it is now a walker's a hostel. But the one thing you can still see are these magnificent pipes that fall from 900 feet above the village down to almost sea level and you might be able to hear the water running uh, behind me because that water gushes through those pipes all the way down to a hydroelectric plant at the edge of the village. It still generates up to 30 megawatts of electricity which is fed into the natural grid. Now these pipes are extremely interesting. They're a bit of a, a British anomaly because uh, the diameter of each pipe is 990 millimetres, six metres uh, in length. And you might think, what on earth is odd about those measurements, Andrew? Well, at the height of the British Empire, when these were installed, Britain was still resolutely using imperial measurements. And we didn't want anything uh, to do with that European nonsense of metric measurements. However, these pipes had to be fabricated in the region of Germany known as Silesia by the Ferrum Company and exported across to Scotland. In fact, they actually brought their own foreman to help with the construction of the pipeline. And each of these joints, you can see them on the right hand side, originally would have been packed with coils of hemp, a rope, and then riveted together. And that forced together would prevent uh, leaks of water coming out of the pipes. Uh, a really interesting technique of uh, sealing them. So this is a little bit of industrial heritage in the Highlands, but why on earth an aluminium smelter in such a remote place? Well, it's very simple. It's because we have a lot of rain, as you might have guessed, here in Scotland, and Kinloch Leven's no different. We can get up to 80 inches of rain every year, which means you can generate cheap electricity, which is the most expensive part of the aluminium smelting process. So uh, we are very much uh, known as the electric 
village here in Kinlochleven. It's said that we had uh, mains electricity to every house in the village when they were built before Buckingham Palace did in London. So if you are near Glencoe at any point in your journeys around Scotland in the future, take the short diversion around Loch Leven and find out a bit more about our industrial heritage. See you next time and haste you back.